in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed let it be a song of surrender. Let it be a song of rededication. Take my will. Take my intellect. Everything belongs to you. Use it for your glory. Someone is praying a desperate, heartfelt prayer. A desperate, heartfelt prayer. Everything belongs to you. A man can receive nothing except it is given unto him of the Lord. Someone pray. Since it belongs to you, take it. Since it belongs to you, anoint it. Since it belongs to you, use it. Abalanda kaparatos kabrete balakus yatabas. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, in your presence tonight, change my life. In your presence tonight, give me an encounter afresh. Someone open your mouth and pray. In your presence tonight, Give me an encounter, a destiny-defining encounter. You are lifting others, lift me also. You are anointing others, anoint me also. You are deploying others, I am ready and willing. You are restoring others, restore me also. You are giving others testimonies, may I not be exempted. A believer is praying, a receiver is praying. You are doing wonders with many. May I be included. You are turning many to signs and wonders. May I be added to that list. May I be added to that list. Visit me tonight by your word. Appear to me by your word again. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. No time spent in the presence of God is a waste. No time spent in the presence of God is a waste. The Bible says they go from strength to strength. As many, not all, but as many as appear before the Lord in Zion. They go from strength to strength. Spiritual strength. Strength of transformation. Strength as hope that you can see a predictable future by the word. In the name of Jesus Christ never become too familiar with his presence never become too familiar with his power never become too familiar with his word we're mandated to tremble at his word because every time we're gathered he says unto the lord shall the gathering of his people be and when we are gathered before him it is always a feast of fat things may your portion get to you in the name of jesus christ please be seated god bless you good evening everybody it's good to have us around again. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Amen. Tonight will be a prayer meeting. I trust that we'll obtain grace to pray. As I open our eyes to a few things, 
So I'll teach, then we'll pray, then I'll teach again, then we'll pray and trust God to build capacity in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to challenge us. The Lord has put it very strongly in my heart to teach this and I want to challenge us. I want to show you and teach you tonight how, how God functions upon the earth and how men can align with God's program and cause his program to happen unhindered. You'll be learning tonight how to be a co-laborer with God. It is possible that a man becomes a co-laborer. In fact, it is in the corporate destiny of every believer that eventually you evolve by growth, by transformation, by empowerment to become a co-laborer with God. As mighty as God is, you would think he does not need men. But God is so vulnerable to men, he does not hide his vulnerability over men. And I'm praying tonight that as God opens our eyes, it will bring you to a greater sense of consciousness that God is depending on me. That everything that is pro-kingdom upon the earth will have to be through the instrumentality of men. Spirit of the living God, open our eyes in Jesus' name. I'm teaching tonight on the topic, I sought for a man. I sought for a man. Giving you a revelation by the Spirit on how to be co-laborers with God. Three scriptures. Ezekiel 22 and verse 30. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. That will not be our testimony. For us, it will be that I found, I hope God can say I found all, but at least I know for sure that God will say I found some. In the name of Jesus Christ, I sought for a man, he says, who will make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. Second scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. We're reading from verse 1, but the verse of emphasis is verse 9. And I, brethren, I could not speak to you, Paul is speaking now, as spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Verse 2. It says, I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. Verse 3. It says, For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For, for while one said, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Next verse. It says, who then is Paul and who then is Apollos? But ministers, this is powerful, but ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. Verse 6, it says, I have planted, Paul is speaking now, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Verse 7, so then neither is he that planted anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Verse 8. It says, Now he that planted and he that watered are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Take note of that. Reward according to his own labor. Let's read verse 9 together now. Ready? One to read. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry ye are God's building. One more time. For we are laborers together. Stop there. For we are laborers together with God. Then it says ye are God's husbandry. The word husbandry there means God's field, God's investment. You are God's building. You are laborers together. Co-laborers. Very profound scripture. Now, I've taught us in this house that believers are categorized um, twofold, essentially. 
that when the Bible describes the believer, there are two categories to our description. Number one, we are described according to identity. Never forget this. We are described first and foremost according to our identity. What does that mean? It, the, the first set of description attempts to help us see the extent of our oneness, that we are partakers of his divine nature. So the Bible uses names like, I am the vine and ye are the branches. Is that in your Bible? Yes. The Bible uses statements like seated with Christ, raised up with Christ. All of those are attempts to show how connected we are to God by reason of the new birth, even by his spirit. So the first way believers are classified or described in scripture is according to identity. Everyone say identity. identity. One more time, shout it, say identity. identity. So in describing the believer, your first port of call is to describe that believer with respect to your spiritual identity not biological identity not geographical identity if we were to describe ourselves biologically then you would call some male female and so on and so forth geographically you now say Igbo, yoruba hausa you know american caribbean those are biological and geographic descriptions but we're talking of spiritual description in describing spiritually everything is with respect to christ every spiritual description of a believer is with respect to who christ is are we together so that we are one with christ we are joined with christ he calls himself the vine then he calls us the branches you find that in john 15. hallelujah the bible tells us in ephesians chapter 2 that we have been raised up with christ and we have been made to sit in heavenly places so this is our first description according to identity now the second description and that mat is, is important for our subject tonight is according to function the second description of the believer is according to function so God describes us according to function this is where you hear descriptions of the believer like light Matthew chapter 5 salt the bible calls us kings and priests revelations 5 and verse 10. you see that now descriptions according to identity the bible calls us ambassadors hallelujah the bible calls us witnesses acts chapter 1 and verse 8. so when the bible describes the believer it describes the believer according to identity and according to function that is the same way God created man in his image, identity, and his likeness, function. You always see that rule. The image, let us make man in our own image, identity, let him function like us, likeness. Are we together? Praise God. I just needed us to have that background so that we we'll appreciate what God is doing. So this is one of such descriptions now. He doesn't just call us partakers. He says we are also co-laborers when it has to do with function. It is a very responsible description. This is to a matured believer that you should not just be conscious of your identity in Christ and with Christ alone. You must know that there is a responsibility component to the Christian faith. And in this responsibility component, you are co-laborers together with Christ. Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 1. I like the way apostle paul puts it hebrews 3 and verse 1 it says wherefore holy brethren then it says partakers of the heavenly calling partakers not just of his righteousness partakers not just of his life as true as that sounds we are also partakers of his calling heavenly calling the Bible says God went about reconciling men and then he did not just stop there. The Bible says he also committed to us, just like him, the ministry of reconciliation. So we have this ministry. We have received by grace ministry, work to be done. 
Jesus said, I must walk the walks of him that sent me. Whilst it is day for the night cometh where no man will walk again. And he said, as my father has sent me. Are we still together? He says, so send I you. So the believer that only understands his identity in Christ will not be a very effective believer. Your identity is for your own value, your own growth, your own confidence. When you are being redefined by the consciousness of your identity, the limitations of your background, the limitations of your life before you became a believer no longer has a hold on you because you are being grafted into a new identity. But it does not stop there. You must go further to know that manifesting the God life is not just looking like God. It is also functioning not just like God, but with God. You don't just look like God, but you have to function like God and then come into partnership in that function with God. Hallelujah. So let's establish a few things tonight. Number one, man, I wrote here, or generally humans, man is the highest of all God's creation. As simple as this sounds, it's important for it to resonate in your spirit that man among the many things God created, and let me tell you the truth, you need to deploy a little intelligence on this statement to really understand its gravity, that man is the zenith, the apex of God's creation. You will have to examine what else God created alongside the characteristic feature that comes with everything he creates. I found myself stumbling across a short video this morning or was it afternoon? I honestly don't even know what took me there. And it was a cheetah running and pursuing an antelope. Hallelujah. They were trying to describe the speed. Both of them were fast animals. And I mean, you could see the intelligence just like two, three um, minutes or so. And you see the discipline, the focus. It kept watching till it detected that one of the antelopes had a little, maybe some wound on one of the legs. And it left the herd and targeted that one. It ran like it was going to die until it caught it. You could see the antelope running, running, and I was saying, my God, so we are better than these animals. They can run more than us, but the Bible still made us Lord over them. If speed were the parameter, man would be about the least of God's creation. Because for men, we are slow in many regards. And yet, God chose us beyond those limitations. We are the zenith, the apex. Nothing, no other creature was created in the image of God. Are we together? Yeah. No other creature was given the privilege of having the life of God. Now, all anything alive comes from God, but God's very life was given only to man. Wasn't given to plants, wasn't given to animals. Animals don't have zoe. Plants don't have zoe. They have their own biological life. It's a kind of life given by God, but only man. Are we together now? Only man has the life of God. This is very important. So man is God's greatest and highest creation. Genesis 1, 26 to 28. We're establishing this in seeking to understand why God needs men and how to labor with God in making kingdom come happen. We need to understand that humans are the highest of God's creation. Genesis 1, 26, 28. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and then let them have dominion verse 28 now very quickly so god blessed them them the man he had created the word adam and said unto adam the man not masculine not male the man that species of creation adam he said be fruitful multiply replenish subdue no other creature that god created no other creature, not even the angels, have this mandate. This mandate is uniquely given to man by God directly. Are we learning now? Psalm 8, beautiful scripture. Let's go to verse 5. Psalm 8. 
Let's start from verse 4. Psalm 8 and verse 4. What is man, he says, that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him. Verse 5. It says, for thou hast made him a little lower than angels. Is the word Elohim. A little lower than God. It's not talking about the angelic class. He's talking about God himself. And has crowned him with glory and crowned him with honor. Verse 6. It says, thou hast made him to have dominion. He's still reflecting Genesis 1, 26 again. You have made that man you created to have dominion over the works of your hands. Let's read the last sentence together, full of faith. Ready? One to read. And has put all things under his feet. How many things? All things. Not just all creatures, all things. So this is establishing the fact that man is God's highest creation. This is a very profound privilege. Not every species of God's creation can be called man. I have taught you. There are many wonderful creatures. You cannot call goat man. Even if goat lives with man for 20 years, he does not become man. He is still going to be called a goat. Now, there are certain animals that have so advanced they can function like men. Some of them have even won Guinness Book of Record, but they are still animals. Are we together? And while science want to call us higher animals, lower animals, one thing for sure is that God calls us man. Are we together? We are not just higher animals with all due respect. Now, biologically, that is good. Write it and pass your exam. But we are man. There are things we have. And I'm not just talking of Mr. Niger. That's not the characteristic of living things. No, we have the life of God. Are we together? The Holy Spirit helps animals, but he does not live in them. It is only man that is a worthy habitation by grace to the Holy Spirit. Are we together? Only demon spirits live in swine, cattle, and the rest. The Holy Spirit can use anything, can speak through an animal, but does not indwell and live in animals. Man. Everybody say, I am God's highest creation. Let the devil hear you. I am God's highest creation. Let this deliver you already from low self-esteem. Let this deliver you from every lie that says to bring you are not fine enough, you are not rich enough. That is his business. One thing is for sure. You are God's highest creation. Now, there are nations on earth, and I'm saying this with all due respect, just to buttress on my teaching. There are nations on earth whose passport, if you hold, you can literally feel like a superior person. Am I right on that? Not trying to be insultive. If you hold a Nigerian passport, you are, you are good. <laughs> Amen. You are, you are good. We have to celebrate our own nation. Yes. Because of us. However, the truth still remains that there are limitations for now we know that god is well on a just name but for now are we together there are nations that holding their passport alone gives you access to over 147 other nations huh holding a nigerian passport as wonderful as it is does not even give you access to africa now, it's wonderful. I'm not laughing at Nigeria. This is my name. I'm, I'm a proud Nigerian. I am. I am. I am. This is where we met God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. The federal government should be happy for this, this statement. We are promoting the image of the country. Amen. Are we together now back back to back to class back to class do you know listen to me there are people simply even if they are thieves because they were fortunate to be born as citizens of x nation y nation that is purported to be more superior say america say uk that person immediately, on account of that, has an advantage. While we will not want to admit it, the truth is still the truth. Maybe it will change one day, but for now, it is a big advantage. 
Are we together? That's what happens when you come into the consciousness that I have been called out of darkness. Now, let me tell you the truth. While you are making that confession, you are the only one who will believe it. Because an American, with all due respect, an American that you find in a pit is still an American. They will still give him that passport. Whether he understands his privilege, whether he would deploy his mind to take advantage of that state or not, is another story. But as far as he is, he will stand beating his chest and say, I am a proud American. And the government will have to respect them. Are we together? There are Nigerians that have been privileged to be born in America, Australia, and you will see somebody looking as dark as me and he tells you I'm an American. And you can't say you are lying. He was born there. Others were not born there, but they became citizens there. Whether you were born there or you became citizens, your new status changes everything. Someone say, my new status. Come on, prophesy. My new status is royalty. My new status is greatness. My new status is glory. You are not making a blind confession. If you don't believe this, you cannot even believe God to use you. Are we together? I'm just educating you that you are more than a goat. You are more than a homo sapien. You are more than, you are not just the brightest of the many species. Science has done its best, but I am telling you, what brands you away from other animals is not just your mind. It's the fact that you have the life of God. You were molded by God's own hand, having his image and his likeness. Shout amen. amen. So man is the zenith of God's creation. Number two, the second thought that we need to learn tonight is that every activity, listen carefully, Every activity that happens upon the earth is man-dependent. Every activity, good or bad, evil or good, every activity that happens upon the face of the earth is man-dependent. Evangelism, man-dependent. Arm robbery, man-dependent. Wickedness, man-dependent. Promotion of love, man-dependent. Advancement and civilization, man dependent. Are we together? Stagnation, individually, corporately, and nationally, man dependent. Every activity that happens upon the earth is man dependent. Psalm 115 and verse 16. Psalm 115 and verse 16. Shout it with me if you can see it, please. Ready? One, two, go. The heaven. Even the heavens are the Lord's. Uh -huh. But the earth has he given to the children of men. But the earth hath he given to Joshua Selman. But the earth hath he given to the children of men. Everything that happens upon the earth is man, man dependent. That means if anything at all should happen, will happen in your life, if anything will happen as touching God's program, as mighty as God is, by his wisdom, he has so designed that system. I sought for a man. Even though I am God, creator of the ends of the earth, all powerful, all wise, omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent, I still seek for men. I sought for a man to bless you. I sought for a man to reverse the course. I sought for a man to introduce me to you. Is someone learning? Everything upon the earth is man dependent. I've taught you that in this kingdom, you are as blessed as the man God sends to you. You are as blessed as the man God sends to you. You are not just as blessed as the houses you have. You are not just as blessed as the naira or kobo or dollars you have in your bank account. In truth, the real treasure of a man is the loyalty of men. You will be learning this. You are as blessed as the men that are around you. I know people who have money but they do not have men. And sooner or later they see the limitation of paper without men. What gives value to everything on earth? I have taught you this. You are educated spiritually enough to know. 
that what gives value to everything on earth, business, education, is the presence of men. Buying and selling only makes sense because there is a man at the back end to receive that exchange. Am I right on that? If every man on earth were dead, even if you leave all the vaults on earth open, it will not do you any good. Promotion, man dependent. Retrogression, man dependent. Listen, if you know this, you will not only understand God, study God, you will also study men. There are many people who know God, but they have ignored men. And so they, their lives can be spiritually robust, but the advancement of God's program through them and the advancement of their own destiny has been shamefully and painfully stunted. Men dependent. Hallelujah. What do you call promotion? A man or a group of men who vet you and are satisfied that you are worthy of increase increase of responsibility together with accompanying privileges that means if the men vet you and see that you are not worthy of promotion you call it stagnation it may be enhanced by demon spirit but the person who signed that paper was not a spirit a demon spirit he was a man who signs the paper for your promotion a man who signs the paper for your lifting a man it is a man that accredits you and says, from this day, you are a doctor. It is a man that accredits you and says, from this day, you are no longer a spinster or a bachelor. You are husband and wife. I declare you. It is God, but I declare you husband and wife. Is that true? It is a man that says, you are declared acquitted. Go. You have no case. It is a man that says, for the next 30 years, you are going to be inside a cell. And you may be stronger than that man. But you will still stay in that cell. If anyone ever told you men are not important, listen to my message. That man has such power, he can end another man's life, even execution. A man called a judge can sit down and hit that hammer and say you are hereby sentenced to life imprisonment. Have you heard such a thing as that? Life imprisonment, not 30 years, not 20 years. That judge can even die and go to heaven. And yet that sentence still stands. It will not change because the person died. What made the word powerful? The man was alive when he spoke. That's the reason why the word still stands. Man. Who delivered Jesus to be crucified? It may be Satan, but it was a man's verdict. Am I right on that? Who put the nails in his hand? Man. Who brought the body out? Let me tell you the truth. Men do not do everything. But most people are not aware of how many things men can do. Are we together now? Yes. Activities upon the earth is men dependent. God is speaking to you now. But he's using a vessel called man. Are we together? Yes. Oh, God granted me safe delivery. But you did not see God in that delivery room. What you saw was a man. What if the man you saw there was holding a gun? Will you have a safe delivery? The man was trained or the woman was trained and helped you deliver. You gave credit to God, rightfully so. But that happened because of a man. Apostle, you made a prophetic declaration. Now I have a job. My question is whose signature is on that employment letter? It's not the signature of the Holy Ghost. It's not the signature of Jesus. The letter was typed and printed, signed by a man. I'm praying for you. Whatever has kept distance between you and strategic men, making your life look like prophecy is a lie, in this season, may my God introduce men to your life. I'm digressing to speak over someone. There are men that are not needed in your life. Don't say you have men around. Not every man is needed. Strategic men anointed by God to become a leverage, receive of their ministry. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. So number one, man, mankind is the highest of God's creation. Number two, every activity on earth happens through men. If God heals the sick, 
it will usually happen through a vessel. If God lifts another person, it happens through a vessel. Number three, the third thing that I want us to know, in fact, I wrote something down here. I'm tempted to look at it. Ministry is men dependent. Business, men dependent. Governance, men dependent. Wars, men dependent. Peace, men dependent. Are you seeing that now? Number three, let's hurry up. Both God and Satan, listen before you write, both God and Satan require men for their programs to be carried out. Both God and Satan require men for their programs to be carried out on earth. Both God and Satan, this is very powerful, both God and Satan require men. They are both in search for men for their programs to be carried out. Are we together? God has a program. Make no mistakes about that. Satan and hell also has a program. Make no mistakes about that. And we are saying that both God and, Ma and, and, and Satan are in search for men and require men for the execution of their program on earth. They do not need men to create the programs. We were not there by his intelligence and by, by his wisdom. He came up with a program for the ages, but executing it upon the earth, I sought for a man. It's not only God who is seeking for a man. Satan too is seeking for a man. Are we together now? Yes. If Satan were not seeking for a man, you would find out how many people he kept pursuing nations and individuals including jesus what then was he looking for both god and satan require men for their program to be carried out the life-giving ministry of jesus requires men the ministry of destruction and death by satan also require men my god this is profound as mighty as God is, able to do without men. He was God before the first man came. But he has limited himself. And by his wisdom, he has designed a system that will always require the participation of men. Make reference to my teaching, let them have dominion. I taught you there um, that... Now, this is my observation from scripture. There are many people who have taught that God needs man's permission to function on earth. I don't believe that. The Bible does not teach that. What God needs is man's participation and cooperation, not permission. When you use the word permission, you limit God and make him to become like an idol. Are we together? God can do without men. If you will not praise me, I will raise up stones, but I will still use something. Are we together now? So God does not need permission from men. What he needs is participation, cooperation from men. The life-giving ministry of Jesus depends on men. The ministry of destruction and death depends on men. Psalm 89 and verse 21. Psalm 89 and verse 21 let's start with 20 i have found david my servant who is speaking god is speaking i have found that means i searched actively i found david my servant and with my holy oil i have anointed him i have found can you imagine god is expressing excitement that i've been seeking for a man and out of the many men to be available, some nonchalant, I have finally found a man worthy of my anointing him. I have found David my servant. So both God and Satan require men. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 2, I will show you that Satan too has found some men. Go ahead and read. One, two, read. And that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men for all men have not faith what are they called unreasonable 
and wicked men who found them satan is he not called the wicked one he found them not all men are in the faith not all men are in the light god has found men unfortunately satan has also found men he deceived them lied to them like he beguiled eve using subtlety seduction he lured them into giving their allegiance to him consciously unconsciously and for as long as satan finds men our world is in trouble because he will be able to execute his program like we see across the nations he will be able to inflict mayhem on people not just spiritually i hope you know that satan's ultimate desire is not just to influence people spiritually satan wants a physical effect of his presence upon the earth hallelujah I, 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 glory be to God. I, 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 glory be to God. I, 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 glory be to God. I, 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 glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Proverbs chapter 6 from verse 16 to 19. Proverbs describes seven kinds of men that Satan needs for his program to happen on earth. Seven kinds of men described here. Satan desperately depends on them. As much as Satan will want to give you an impression that he is almighty as much as satan want to give you an impression like he can veto your will and destroy you it is a lie as mighty as god is he limited himself to midwife his program through men proverbs 6 16 to 19 may you never be any of these men i'm speaking to you in the name of jesus you will never be any of these men and if you are one of these men, tonight salvation has come for you. Yeah. The Bible says, these six things does the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Are you ready? Seven kinds of men. Let's go. Number one, a proud look. This is a description of a kind of man. Number two, a lying tongue. A description of a kind of man. Number three, hands that shed innocent blood. The description of a kind of man. Number four, a heart that devised wicked imaginations. Another kind of man. Number five, feet that be swift in running to mischief. Another kind of man. Go ahead. Number seven, a false witness that speaketh lies. Amplified will say, or half truth. They are still lies. Are we together now? A false witness that breathes out, okay, that speaketh lies. And then number seven, it says, He that soweth discord among brethren. Take away these seven kinds of people. You can see Satan and say, Good afternoon, and pass. And there's nothing he can do. He is that incapacitated. Everywhere you see infliction of darkness, it was midwived by the presence of these seven groups. Is someone learning now? I'm showing you that it's not only God who is looking for men. Satan is also looking for men. The same way you are doing evangelism, Satan is also doing evangelism. The same way Satan has men. I mean, Jesus has men. Satan has men too. The same way God has men that teach and raise other men. Satan has men that teach and raise other men. There is a parallel of everything that God is doing. The central point is man. This is how important you are. Seven kinds of men. Now, what does it mean to be a co-laborer with God? It means that every man has a role to play. Listen carefully. Every man has a role to play. 
to make destiny fulfillment and kingdom advancement a reality what does it mean to be a co-laborer with god having this consciousness first it starts as a consciousness that you have a role to play in making destiny fulfillment and kingdom advance a reality what does it mean to be a co-laborer with god number one having the consciousness the awareness the orientation that i have a role to play as far as making destiny actualization and kingdom advance a reality i have a role to play there is a measure of god's program that has been trusted to me as an individual there is a measure of god's program that has been trusted to this ministry and to the degree to which we have that consciousness are we together that is the degree to which that dimension of his program comes to pass imagine how how many of god's program right now is under lock and key because the men who are supposed to work in partnership with god through ignorance or rebellion they have refused to cooperate with god imagine if there were no paul apostle paul i hope you know there was still jesus but there was no two-third of the new testament because one man was not there imagine the bible without peter imagine the bible without abraham imagine that the 120 were not there even though jesus were there as the king of kings exalted his program would still suffer what does it mean to be a co-laborer with god to have a consciousness that i have a role to play in making destiny fulfillment this one is personal to you now and in making kingdom advance a reality someone shout amen. amen that means god is depending on me if anything good and anything god will ever happen as touching my destiny it does not just depend on the will of god are we together it depends on me having this consciousness that joshua selman if your life will be glorious you have a role to play if you are going to be prosperous you have a role to play if you are going to be a great leader you have a role to play if you are going to be a great preacher you have a role to play if you are going to fulfill genesis 12 and verse 3 you have a role to play many believers know that god has a role to play in their lives but they do not know that they have a role to play apostle i'm trusting god to be governor i can tell you it's not only prophecy you have a role to play i'm trusting god that i will end poverty in my life what do i do here is my seed that is not the only role to play you have a role to play i'm trusting that i will be a vibrant man of god all i need is oil no sir the value of oil is that it comes upon a mind that is determined to play its role determined to play its role determined to play its role who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and despised the shame are we together many believers do not know how much role they have to play in making their lives happen if it is going to happen i tell you it is not all up to you but it is up to you it is not all up to you if you make it all up to you now there is a portion of your success equation that only the size of god can feel when you delve into that territory you are taking the place of god and you will pay for it sometimes immediately but to fold your arms and believe that because god loves you he will magically make your life happen with no effort of yours now please look up when i talk about having a consciousness that you have a role to play you must know what that role is many believers know that they have a role to play but they choose the role they think they want to play and say god i've done something you are joking it is god that defines the role you will play yours is to accept it obtain grace and engage accept that role obtain grace and engage knowing that you have a role to play in making your destiny happen is wonderful but deciding the role you will play by yourself is another kind of foolishness are we together there is a standard for every result you need you are not the one who chooses it no success has already chosen the requirement yours is to find out 
obtain the enabling grace. I taught you this last week. But you engage. Apostle, I want to become a man of God over nations. I want God to trust me with several people. All right? So what do you think? I'll I, 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 I decide what I want to do. It doesn't work that way. There is already a standard. If you want to be the Savior Jesus, the requirement is death on the cross. Not even the tears of Jesus would change that standard. He cried, oh, and still died. Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. Father, you turn your face away from me and God would have said, ah, I'm touched, my son. He said, you will still die. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin, non-negotiable. Are we together now? Yes. The price of success is fixed. There are no bargains. No. The price of greatness is fixed. There are no bargains. No. Greatness is not a market where you go and price something from 18 naira to 75. Uh -uh. The one God will price, the product itself has already been bought. But the price for delivery like I've taught you, that one too is not cheap. And you have to know what that price is. Consciousness. Great people always think in terms of their participation, not just things happening. The moment God speaks to you, if you carry this orientation as you are learning tonight, if you hear God say, I want to go somewhere, I want to visit your village, or I want to visit Abuja, you don't just say, I woke up from a dream. God is going to visit Abuja. That is an irresponsible believer's approach. But a co-laborer with God knows that every time there is a mandate, two people are involved. God and me, the spirit and the bride, the spirit and the bride. I want to heal your family. I have a new mandate now. The spirit of God is in the business of healing. Lord, what is my role? And he says, now a son is talking. I want to deliver your family out of poverty. You don't say, I have seen it. It must happen. It will not happen. I assure you. And God will not be a liar. Simply because you have not carried the consciousness that every command that comes from God also comes with a mandate to you to make it happen. If God says, I want to lift you, do not hear, I want to lift you alone. Listen well. You will hear what you need to do to partner with that lifting. If God says, I want to increase your ministry, don't just hear increase alone. You did not hear well. You must hear what you need to do. Someone shout co-laborers with God. Say co-laborers with God. Over your destiny, you are a co-laborer with God. Everything God has told you about your destiny is not a lie. But it will never happen for as long as you are hoping that someday something will happen. I take my destiny serious. When I learned this, the moment I hear something from God, I go to work immediately. I don't spend all my life celebrating prophecy. I thank God if I wake up with a nice dream. Father, thank you because I see that this is what you are going to do. Get me a pen and paper. We need to plan with God. We need to dream with God. What is my own role now? There will always be something you have to do. He spat on the ground, made sputum out of it, put it in the eyes of the blind man and said, Go, I won't escort you. I've released the power, released through obedience. Be on your way to the pool of Salem. What if the man did not have any helper? Do you know that that command itself provided the grace to get there? The grace to get to the pool was in the command. How the man got there is not our business. We know that he got there. If that guy did not get there, that mud would dry in his eyes and his state would be worse than he was. And that man would turn now and say, anytime Jesus tells you, I will open your eyes, run away because he's a liar. His disobedience made the power of God look like a lie. There are many people, what you heard from God is not a lie. But not knowing that when it has to do with destiny fulfillment, when it has to do with the program of God, I am a co-laborer. Shout it again. Say, I am a co-laborer. Yes, sir. Over the transformation of your family, that prophecy will remain there till you become old. The day you know you are a co-laborer, 
the demons in your family will be in trouble. The day you understand that this prophecy has been hanging for 10 years, waiting for a man. Do you know that there are prophecies that are older than us? God spoke it to our grandparents. They kept claiming and saying it will happen. They died like that and that prophecy has remained. And some of you, God will revisit you again and say, there's something I spoke to your people. Are you willing? And you say, Lord, I may not know, but I am a co-laborer. And God says, thank you. For 50 years, I've been looking for one man. This is why the Bible says, he suffered no man to do them wrong. You know how hard it is even for God to find one man? When God finds one man who loves him and he invests in that man, he says, we are co-laborers together with Christ. Then he says, we are his husbandry. The word husbandry there means his investment. Everybody watches over his investment. You will not watch your investment crash and you are folding your arms. No. Say, I'm God's investment. Yes, sir. Took a lot to train you. Took a lot to chisel you. No devil will come and just sweep your life like that. Carry that consciousness. I am not just a believer. I am God's investment. The Bible says where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. God's heart is with me. I am his investment. I really believe it. I really truly believe it. Are we together? Some of you, the only thing you are thinking about in your village is your house there because it's your investment. Some of you have houses in the US, in UK, in Nigeria, and your heart is scattered across all those places. Portions of your heart. You want to know what is happening with your investment. I am God's investment. Ah, there's so much on my life. His blood, his name, his life his trust, his honor. I am God's investment. Yes, sir. You may not look like it, but you are God's investment. Where you are coming from, they may not appreciate you, but it does not change the fact that you are God's investment. You want to know how, that, how to protect investment? Learn from women. When women buy pure gold, say gold, Women, help us in this in understanding. When a woman buys gold, real, genuine, original gold, no matter, you may think the gold is small. You are the one who does not know the worth. But the woman knows how she labored, waiting for them to do all the things they do. Is that true? She will pick that gold like that. Usually it comes with some kind of thing and they keep it and hide it. Then hide it somewhere else that only them will know. Are we together? Upon the fact that there are only two or three in that house, you will still hide it. Say treasure. That's how you are. Hidden in Christ. Hidden in God. Hidden in Christ. Hidden in God. Please understand what I'm telling you now. You are God's investment. You are not an afterthought. He took out time. While he was depositing the blood, the Holy Spirit, he still saw your village when he kept doing it. He still saw whatever. Don't let naysayers and social media and so people who don't know your background, they don't know anything about you. Don't let anybody just come up and say, if you are not like this, if you are not rich like this, if you are not beautiful like this, not handsome like this, they should carry their perspective and go away. Go away quickly. Say, I'm God's investment. Ah, be healed while you are saying this. Be healed from complex, whatever is stopping you from being used by God. Anyone can look at you and say, you don't look like a preacher. You, are, you don't carry that charisma. That is your business. You are still God's investment. There are times, those of you in agriculture, nobody goes to farm inside an expensive estate. Sometimes the farms that bring the greatest foods, they are somewhere that you would think you are going to a herbalist place before you will see a large expanse of land but that's where the farming happens you take the food from there then you bring it to the city am i right on that the largest farm lands are not in the city they are outside of the city there is something god is doing in your life just because you have not come to the city yet does not mean you are not god's investment mm. he's watering you every day and watching you grow He's watering you every day and watching you grow.
out of all the people in your family you are the only person who has given him this kind of attention God is not you know that God is mighty but the thing that surprises me about God is that he's not proud if God were to be proud nobody would say you are wrong and yet he's not proud when God finds a man he pants after that man as if he lost his power I have seen God's desperation over men we are men who sometimes will need people and act like I don't need you because of our pride. God is not like that. When he finds you, you, you literally can feel him reaching down to say thank you. I, I ask your grandfather, I ask your father, now that you are here, I won't let you go easily. Most of you don't know that you are engraved in the palm of his hands. That's why you give Satan a chance. He just makes it look like I can steal you anywhere. Go and read John 17. All that you have given me I have kept and none is lost except the son of perdition he had to account for Judas say I'm God's investment someone say it those who are following online say it oh I am God's investment a lot has gone into me a lot has gone into me a lot has gone into me ah God would rather fix me than throw me I am God's investment a lot has gone into me are we together now god will rather correct you than throw you you are god's investment god will rather refire you yes sir you must carry that consciousness god can do without me but he has chosen to do with me make sure you don't ignore me if God did not ignore me and you ignore me you will pay for it it's not pride it's the truth I will not ignore you because you are that special to God you see when you this is the basis for respecting a believer not the car that is parked outside no because that car can change overnight but your status with God even if you are Job he will rather fix you than throw you even if you are Rahab, he would rather fix you than throw you. So when you see God insist on men, and you are saying, God, what is it about this family? You will not leave them. This is the reason. You are God's investment. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Man of God, you can start again. You are God's investment. My dear sister, you can start again. You are God's investment. This is, I'm drumming it because there is an anointing on this statement I've made. God's investment. There are a million men of God on earth. I agree, but I am God's investment. Unique investment. My sister, there are many women who can pray, but you are God's investment. He does not treat you like he's treating any other person. Don't mind naysayers and ignorant people who don't know your value. You are God's investment. I'm drumming it in your heart. I want it to keep playing in your mind as you sleep. I am God's investment. God's investment. His hand is upon me. What's that P. Daniel song? Sing it for me. One Yoruba person sing that song for me. Your hand is upon me. Giving me speed. Hallelujah. I have a role to play in God's program. No, I'm not without a mandate. Prophesy to yourself, I have a role. Turn it into prayer. I have a role. I have a role. I have a role. I have a role, oh, pray. I'm not just an empty musician. I have a role. I'm not just an empty preacher. I have a role. Someone pray. 
I'm not just a profit seeking businessman I have a role I carry this consciousness a lot depends upon you and I on account of his message he can do without us but he's chosen to carry us along hallelujah hallelujah praise the name of the Lord have you seen how a system can be stagnated because one person was not there maybe people are traveling and the driver did not come on time everybody can be ready but because of one person and you see the efforts that is made to call that one person you try to call the driver's number it's not going everybody is angry but they can't ignore the driver because he is the guy who would drive them there why are you wasting our time i'm on my way coming up I'm, I'm almost at this place there's a hold up and impatiently but they still wait it's called value i'm praying for you whoever has ignored you ignore the grace of god upon your life and in the name of jesus let there be a renewed orientation in you let there be a renewed orientation in you that god can do without me God can do without you, but he has chosen as an act of his mercy and grace to make you a major part of his program. And there is nothing the devil can do about it. You believe that? Shout amen. amen. Please be seated. My life changed when this consciousness became a reality in me that by the privilege of God's grace and mercy, I have a part to play in God's program it gave me confidence to obey God it gave me confidence to look beyond the faces of people regardless skin color regardless place regardless nationality it gave me the fortitude to look beyond the limitations of my context and see God for who he is to be a co-laborer with God demands that you carry this consciousness that I have a role to play in making destiny fulfillment and kingdom advance a reality. That means our non-challenge or faithful partnership is what defines our realities. Our non-challenge, whatever will be, will be. If God is God, let him make it happen. No, that's not a believer's orientation. God can make it happen, but the earth has he given to the children of men. I take that responsibility and I partner with him. Hallelujah. Are we learning? Now, there are two questions I want us to answer very quickly. The first question is found in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 9. I hope God is helping someone tonight. I sought for a man. God is helping us to be co-laborers. Co-laborers. Let's read together. And the Lord God called on to Adam the very first question in the Bible the very first question recorded in the Bible is where are you where are you this is a very profound question Adam where are thou while I was preparing these notes it was just quickened in my spirit do you know what this means? It's a question. This is the very first question in the Bible that God is asking man. Where are you? Where are you in my program? Where are you that darkness is still destroying your family? Where are you that destinies connected to you have not risen? Where are you? He's not just asking location. He's asking what happened to your consciousness. He's not just saying, where are you in terms of, okay, you are in Garki, go to this place. No, where are you? Where have you kept your orientation that you have allowed darkness to invade a territory and you are just thinking of me and not thinking of you as a co-laborer? Adam, where are you? The garden is being mismanaged. I gave you stewardship over the garden. 
Where are you? You know, like someone who, let's say you gave someone a company to manage and you are hearing all kinds of things. They are stealing, the furnitures are going down. You can call the person. Where are you? You are not just asking him of location. It's a call to responsibility. In other words, wake up. I gave you stewardship. You are mismanaging the place. That's what is happening there. Adam, where are you? God is telling someone, you must answer this question tonight. Where are you? That darkness seems to be growing over your family. Where are you? That you cannot use the tool of prayer to change things. Where are you? That the souls connected to you around your neighborhood and the nations. This is a call to a preacher. Preacher, where are you? Businessman, where are you? Apostle, where are you? Prophet, where are you? Hallelujah. Mother, where are you? That your children are let loose. They are just becoming every kind of thing. Father, where are you? That your family is plunging to decline right before your eyes. And you are saying, I know one day it will go better. It will not be better that way. That is not how things become better. The day you make up your mind and say, I am the father in this family. A husband to this wife. Lord, you said any man that cannot cater for his family has denied the faith. I want to come into partnership with you to take over this shame. Now that is a co-laborer. That is the day you are ready to get help from heaven. But just saying I submitted my CV. This man is not even calling me. No. Where are you? It's a call to responsibility. Man of God, where are you? That you have not raised other mighty warriors in the kingdom. There are people by God's calendar should be at certain frequencies in the spirit who are under your grace. Where are you that you are failing in that assignment? Where are you? <laughs> God is speaking to somebody. Where are you? That you are a ministry and it's not. You are not a ministry. There is no impact whatsoever. Where are you that the nations are dying? Where are you that the body of Christ is still looking for finances for kingdom activities? Where are you? With respect to your mandate. With respect to that which I've called you to do. Are you ready to answer that question? Let me show you the answer to that question. The answer to that question is found in Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 8. God kept asking that question. A proper interpretation to that question is found in verse 8. Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? That is the response to the question he asked Adam. Here am I, send me. When God says, where are you? You don't say Abuja. That's the wrong answer. When he says, where are you? He means, should I still depend on you? Should I still depend on you? You have your will. Are you going to disappoint me again? Like your father did. Like your grandfather did like the other preacher did are you going to disappoint me can i still trust you he said here am i send me send me i sought for a man asking where are you where are you in this family because i need a deliverer and you say lord i am here send me send me to be that financial apostle Send me to be that evangelist to the nations. Send me to be that captain of industry. I am not just a believer. I am a co-laborer. We are doing it together. The greater share, the spiritual power, the wisdom comes from you. But turn it to an enabling grace. And then I will fire on all four cylinders. Until I see that my destiny becomes. Until I see that your program happens. God's servant said... Behind everything that works is somebody making it work. Behind everything that works, finances that works, marriage that works, children that work, the mind, a mind that works. Behind everything that works is someone making it work. Someone making it happen. Hallelujah. A determination to be a co-laborer with God. By having the right consciousness and the willingness to engage with God. Now, very quickly, there are three dimensions to our labor. 
This will be the zenith of my teaching now. There are three dimensions to our labor. It is true that God is seeking for men. And it is true that we are co-laborers. But I am teaching you that the labor is not haphazard. I want to open your eyes to see how being a co-laborer with God happens and the various dimensions. Not everybody is doing the same thing. Are you ready now? Pray in the spirit in one minute. We are co-laborers with God. Co-laborers with God. Co labor us with God the ministry of life co labor us with God the ministry of healing co labor us with God changing destinies co labor us with God rewriting stories in the lives of men co labor us with God hallelujah praise the name of the Lord Nehemiah chapter 4 please We'll begin our reading from verse 15. Shamalandos kubiata kabalatas. And it came to pass when our enemies heard, let me your attention, that it was known unto us that God had brought their counsel to naught, that we return all of us to the wall. Listen carefully. Everyone unto his work. Everyone unto his work. Next verse. And it came to pass that from that time forth that the half of my servants wrought in the work and the other half of them held both the spears and shield and the bows and the harbagions and the rulers were behind all the house of Judah. Next verse, please. It says, they which builded on the wall, different. And they that bear burdens, different. With those that ladded every one of his hands, wrought in the work, and with the other hand they held a weapon. Verse 18. It says, for the builders, Everyone has a sword girded by his side and so build it. And they that sounded the trumpet were by me. This is the distribution of labor. Verse 19. And I said unto the nobles and the rulers and to the rest of the people, listen carefully, the work is great and large and we are separated upon the wall one far from another verse 20 the final verse in what place therefore wherever you are walking when you hear the sound of the trumpet let us all come together because it's the same thing we are doing he's saying look as far as this work is concerned it has separated us into different things some are holding the trumpet some are holding weapons some are doing all kinds of things but that a time will come you will hear a sound when you hear that sound once you are a walker respond to that alert he said resort ye hither unto us for our god will fight for us that was the formula they used in building rebuilding the walls of jerusalem we will not all do the same thing like you have learned but all of us are co-laborers with god and i want to show you three dimensions of labor with God. Number one, the labor of prayer and intercession. Just listen carefully. The first way to be a co-laborer with God, particularly with respect to kingdom come, the fulfillment of his program, is the labor in prayer and intercession. Ezekiel 22 and verse 30 where we read, he says, and I sought for a man who would make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 7, please. 29, 7, Jeremiah. Let's read together. One to read. And seek the peace of the city, whither I have caused you to be carried away captive, and pray unto the Lord for it. Why? For in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. 
wherever you find yourself it is your responsibility to pray for the peace of that person that organization that city it says for in its peace you will find your own peace too if there is no peace in that organization you too you will not have peace if there is no peace in our nation you too you will not have peace the business of prayer and intercession is one way to labor with God second Corinthians 1 11 second Corinthians 1 11 ah let's read together are you ready one to read ye also helping together how by prayer for us that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons thanks may be given by many on our behalf how did he ask for help by praying for us you are a co-laborer with God when you engage in the ministry of prayer and intercession that means I am in partnership with God making things happen making his program advance listen carefully I am in partnership with God for the healing of the nations the healing of this family I am in partnership with God in seeing that the next apostles prophets pastors teachers arise partnership with God is someone learning second Thessalonians 3 and verse 1 and 2 profound scripture second Thessalonians 3 1 and 2 finally brethren he's speaking to brethren pray for us this is the apostle now mighty man anointed man great man of God apostle per excellence but he says pray for us the same way we are co-laborers with God you are also co-laborers with us you see it happens both vertically and horizontally it's an orientation that applies between God and men and between men and men pray for us number one that the word of the Lord may have a free course unhindered and be glorified even as it is with you verse 2 it says your prayer content should also be that we may be delivered we read it earlier from unreasonable and wicked men why because satan also has men and he will try to use those men to fight god's program so in the place of prayer you can pray and word of the spirit influences that manipulates the hearts and the minds of men towards working out purposes that are antichrist Are we learning intercession I want to teach you something about intercession that I've not taught you before it was just quicken in my heart effective intercession should have a threefold focus we're looking at the three dimensions of labor as a co-laborer with God and we're now discussing the labor of prayer and intercession or labor in prayer and intercession and I'm showing you that effective intercession if your intercession is to be effective your focus must be threefold number one establishing victory over demonic forces that must be the first focus of your intercession number two empowering the vessels with wisdom faith and power that is the second dimension of your focus so if you are ever praying for God's program a man of God a church don't just pray at random this should be the threefold focus number one establishing victory over demonic forces because it is spirits that influence the minds and the hearts of men number two you are praying for empowerment for the vessels a supply of wisdom a supply of faith and a supply of power are we together and then number three the third focus is access to the heart of men access to the heart of men who translate as helpers any if you have ever tried to pray for any man of God particularly I'm telling you this is how to pray effectively oh Lord bless him wipe his tears ah it's, it's not a very wise prayer the intercessory ministry must have a threefold focus. Number one, the demonic forces. You are establishing victory. The powers that try to manipulate men, 
the powers that try to manipulate systems to work against the program of God number two the vessels themselves for wisdom and outpouring of wisdom and outpouring of faith and outpouring of power and then number three you are praying that God will raise men to stand by those vessels that they will have access into cities access to systems and structures you intercede like that for anyone or God's program and your intercession will be very effective most people pray but the content of their prayer is not rich and wise we just say a lot of things in prayer and say amen the first way we labor with God is through prayer and intercession and we're saying interceding should have a threefold focus not limited to the three but they are foundational in terms of your focus warding of demonic forces that manipulates the hearts and the minds of men praying for empowerment for the vessels empowerment with wisdom faith and power and then praying for access to the hearts of men the men that are translated as helpers are we learning now so the first way we labor in partnership with God is through prayer and intercession you would notice that every week from a few weeks ago we've been praying here praying for the conference that is beginning this week this is part of the principle it is not just praying for the conference every week we pray for everything there is no week that enters blindly and carelessly we immerse every week richly in prayer and intercession do you know why for this threefold reason that all the demonic powers that fight the program of God and fight our role in that program that they be warded off through the power of prayer number two that God will continue to grant us wisdom grant us faith and grant us the enablement of the spirit and then number three that God will continue to raise help to make the work effective can I pray that prayer for you let me be an intercessor for you in one minute that in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God I pray for you the forces that fight God's program fight your role in actualizing God's program I curse them right now in Jesus name by the ministry of the blood I decree and declare over you that every legal access Satan has over your life and over your bishopric in the name of Jesus let the blood speak right now let the blood speak mercy let the blood speak freedom let the blood speak jubilee let the blood speak liberty number two i pray for you that the wisdom that is needed in this new season wisdom grows because it is alive the wisdom needed to scale your impact the faith needed to dare things that men cannot even dare and in the name of jesus the empowerment of the spirit that helps you to run through a troop and to leap over walls in the name of Jesus may they rest upon you empowered by wisdom receive it empowered by the spirit of faith receive it by this impartation fear dies in your life the fear of the past dies in your life the fear of opinions of men die in your life the fear of failure dies in your life. The fear of the future dies in your life. In the name of Jesus. And then I pray for you. Seeing that even your destiny is men dependent. Everyone ordained by God to show up in your life, your ministry in this season. To make your calling and your election sure. I pray that speedily they will show up. I pray that speedily they will appear I say it again speedily they will show up speedily they will appear in the name of Jesus Christ please be seated I sought for a man you want to come into that co-laboring partnership with God your first port of call is to engage strategically in prayer and intercession let me tell you this if you are a man of God here 
make it a culture to pray for your people I pray for you ask God a major part of my prayer is not for myself honestly are we together there are people who don't pray for those around them leaders don't pray for the people under them they allow the devil to just ravage their lives and destroy them no and you also have a responsibility to pray for me pray for koinonia you have been taught you have been mentored that as we are traveling right now if in your mind you think oh joshua selman is traveling to us traveling to canada he's going for a program then you have not learned well you should be on your knees all through even whilst you are following to be blessed but you know you see that now it is it is a million people in one man by grace going i've taught you here i never travel alone we are in covenant we go together you may not be able to go there but your prayers as we travel your prayers lord unction like never before let your word find cause let sinners be saved let the lost be saved let there be signs and wonders bringing validation to your name plant a seed in someone raise the next revivalist let there be the people let it be like the upper room let there be an outpouring you are interceding you may be doing that in your room but let me tell you you are in america too you are in canada too you are wherever too in God's mind, you are not wherever his program is, whoever is praying is also there. Are we together? Number two, very quickly. The second way we labor with God as co-laborers, as men that God has found, I call it the labor of active service. The labor of active service. The first is the labor of or the labor in prayer and intercession the second is called the labor of active service matthew chapter 9 37 and 38 matthew chapter 9 37 and 38 here's jesus speaking the harvest truly is plentiful but the laborers the laborers are few verse 38 he says pray ye therefore you pray but the prayer request is that the lord of the harvest will send forth laborers the labor of active service there are those who stay behind and make the spiritual investment but there are those who go and they are not just preachers alone they are in active service in business they are in active service in governance in active service in leadership in active service in ministry and with respect to our focus of kingdom come listen let me tell you the truth while it is good to pray we need to pray that God will find more vessels you will think that because there are many preachers on earth there are many business people on earth we've, we've done several teachings I don't want to go there refer to my teaching the fishers of men God is still looking for men did you hear what I said God is still looking for men. When there are few men, they become an endangered species. When Satan strikes one person, that can end, it can impede God's program. But when there are mighty people, there are strong people, when one person is wounded, he can stay until he's healed and the program of God continues because there are many men. The reason why when Satan strikes one person in a family, Maybe the person who you call a breadwinner or the person who God is using. Maybe let me not even speak ministry so that you don't think I'm just talking preaching. This person is the businessman that God is using. Your prayer should not only be to have money and give the people. Your prayer should be that God will raise many other people too. In the rising of many other people is your rest. Because if you don't rise the day something happens to that company, you will watch 12, 13 people who have been limited. They are depending on you. And Satan will target when five of them are about to go to the university. Then something happens to your finances. And for three years, while you are on your path to recovery, your family and everybody connected to you remains down. Are we together now? We must pray that God will raise more people. Thank God for the financiers we have in the body of Christ. But we still need more people. 
so that you don't overburden only one person. Thank God that God has helped you. But by the time everybody is praying on one person, maybe for support, that person is human. They also have their lives. Is the reason why people are so overburdened. Are we together? If in a great ministry like this, I know that every you know people love and give, and I'm, I'm just making an example. Let's assume there are just four or five people who are involved. I'm just using finance as an example. You, you think the kind of burden that comes on those four or five people. It is the reason why we have to pray and trust God and also obtain grace to be in active service. What does it mean to be in active service? Stay on your lane. Be on your call. Make sure that you are engaged. If you are a preacher, prepare for preaching and when the green light comes, start preaching. Don't just prepare forever. You have to start. Are we together? You are a businessman. You can't be planning forever. A day has to come, you will start. Many people are planning forever. Active service. Active service. Have you tried to rush to use a restroom or to use an ATM or to use something and you see a statement there? Out of service. It is there, but it is useless as far as purpose is concerned. If an ATM is written out of service, it will be insanity to still stand there. No. Except if they motivate you and say it will be resuming shortly. Aha, then you can be motivated. There are many of us, even though we are alive, but in the spirit there is a statement on our head, out of service, out of kingdom service. In other words, when favor is coming, there's no need it should come to you. You are out of service. Are we together? If help is coming, there's no need it comes to your family. You are out of service. I'm yours. Jesus, I'm yours forevermore. I'm yours. Jesus, I'm yours forevermore. Wherever you want to go Lord you can go through me whatever you want to say Lord you can say through me whoever you want to lift Lord you can lift very powerful prayer the labor of active service I live a very busy life but my joy is that I'm serving the king that in my lifetime I will spend and be spent for his majesty spend and be spent for his majesty active service don't just say I will serve you serve him don't just say, I will serve you. Serve him. Serve him in whatever capacity. God is calling you to ministry. Go ahead and be serious with your training. And as the green light comes, obtain grace. Serve him. Someone's destiny is dependent on your service. It's called you to an, be an intercessor. Serve him. Provision is for those who are serving honor is for those who are serving favor is for those who are serving not those who want to serve not those who are talking about service i shall not die but live and declare not intend to declare for as long as i'm alive someone will hear about jesus for as long as i'm alive somebody sick will be healed for as long as i'm alive one oppressed person will have his destiny rewritten for as long as i'm alive consistently the word of god will come through me making building mentoring maturing for as long as i'm alive i will continue to receive these graces and be an endless conduit of these possibilities for as long as i'm alive it is my commitment it is a richer wiser and fuller way to live there are many of us who are living as if we're already dead. We're empty already. There is no cause in your life that is the reason why you go to bed. There is no cause in your life that is the reason why you wake up. 
it is a very bad way to live purpose heals a sense of purpose it gives you something to do hallelujah all through this week now we are preaching the gospel doing what we are doing by the grace of God and we are back and the job continues you may not have the opportunity to preach or travel like this but where you are you are building that organization God already told you that your mandate is to supply resources to the kingdom God has given you the mandate it is you that will give a job to 100 graduates who will be able to take care of their family who will send their younger ones to school so in your being diligent is somebody's salvation get to work the labor of active service the grace for entrepreneurship is on you you may not be a preacher but you are a minister get to work build the company stop giving excuses fail on time until you succeed don't run away from failure you will fail on the way fail on time and get it out of the way so that you now start succeeding are we together sharpen your skills you are in the media make sure you do what you are doing well the gospel depends on it the efficiency of other ministries depend on it don't be careless and say well I won't go go for the training build yourself if you need to get a certification go on time don't wait don't waste time I said I would do it in January we're in July now make up your mind after service I will go somewhere go and register the company this week apostle I just have 60,000 he can start look for a lawyer in Koinonia here and start and lawyer if they give you money make sure you deliver with, with no stories because we need to balance these kinds of things integrity so that we don't hear any stories as you are giving it go straight and do what you were asked to do are we learning can I tell you nothing moves till you move nothing moves till you move the signs follow the signs follow God is speaking to you start the NGO pay the school fees of the children you want to wait until the day you can pay the school fees of 100 children nobody started like that start with two train them focus on two who are about writing Wayek. that's Esther you are training Mordecai that's Ruth you are training Naomi make your life count don't wake up and just eat and grow old and gossip and tell lies and be angry and be jealous and sleep it's not a wise way to live say my life must count shout it say my life must count listen you are waking yourself up this night no more waking up in the morning I wake up when I want to wake up no consequences I sleep when I want to sleep no consequences the day I feel emotional I open my Bible your life is not governed by anything there is no vision nothing driving you nothing placing a demand on your time the labor of active service you are not just trying to get a job because you are afraid of hunger you are aware that in doing this it is my partnership with Jesus I am a co-laborer I am a co-laborer if I become a media expert today and I help 20 churches to be effective in their media ministry that is my assignment because of that if I need to go to America for a three-month program if I need to go to US for a three-month program to Canada for a three-month program don't say I don't have the money go and browse watch institution you will go first nothing moves till you move are you hearing what I'm saying now someone is a pause in my mind is America there's a place in Abuja here you can do a one-week training start from there you shall be witnesses in Jerusalem Jerusalem leave the ends of the earth you will go there tomorrow but start from Jerusalem there are many people who want to start from the ends of the earth and go where after that there is no joy to the journey again you start from Jerusalem are we together then Judea then Samaria you also enjoy the process of growth but by the time you start from the ends of the earth where else are you going to go to I've taught you here don't hurry seasons there is a joy that comes with growth 
Be fast, but not excessively fast. Enjoy the process of knowing God and serving Him as you grow. Go slow enough to study your growth and mentor others. When your whole tomorrow enters your today, there will not be joy in living again. The labor of active service. The labor of active service. Worshippers, keep bringing the songs. Active service. Go and write the song. Don't just wait for the Holy Spirit to give you. Carry a pen and paper. Open your Bible and sit with a guitar. Sit with a keyboard. You can prime your inspiration. It is me and the Holy Spirit doing this. Don't just lazily sit and say the day the song comes, it will come. No. No. How do you think David wrote all the Psalms he wrote? Inspiration comes when you are at work. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain